It's been years since Apple announced the AirPods Pro, and they were really far ahead of their time. Yes, there were many other great wireless headphones on the market at the time, but the AirPods Pro just seemed to get everything right. Save for the fact that they didn't ever work well with Android or Windows devices, which was a downside for me. That being said, because I still have a number of Apple products around the house, I always kept a pair of AirPods Pro around for my go-to pair of earbuds whenever I was using those. So how do you follow up on a product that's already pretty great? Well, you refine it. The AirPods Pro 2 only have a couple small changes that make a big experience change in using the AirPods Pro 2, but is that worth an additional 250 bucks for an upgrade, or is it worth upgrading from some other solution? Let's talk about it. This is an OISO, and this is the AirPods Pro 2 review. If you're new here, welcome to the channel, and be sure to get subscribed, but I start all of my reviews of earbuds with the outside and the case. The AirPods Pro 2 case is one of the biggest changes from the original AirPods Pro 2. We've got now a speaker that allows you to find it wirelessly and makes some slight indication sounds whenever they're charging or something similar. And then you have the additional lanyard connection on the side, which frankly I will never use because I have no interest. The AirPods Pro 2 case is basically the same, which is to say I hate it. And let me explain why. I love the fact that the AirPods Pro 2 case is so small. It is still substantially smaller than a lot of other competitors on the market, and so it slides into a pocket alongside a phone without causing an additional large bulge or basically sticking out substantially, which is nice. But the problem with I have with it is the fact that it still uses the same cheap, scratchable plastic. Two weeks of normal use with the AirPods Pro 2 left the case in shambles. Like, Yes, technically it looks fine here, but if I actually zoom into it, you'll start to see a lot of scratches and marks and even a big chip taken out of it. And I don't beat up my AirPods case. It's not like I throw it on the ground or throw it across the room. Instead, it's just sat in my pocket alongside several phones. And I frankly think that the aluminum or sapphire glass of the cameras are, is scratching against the side of the AirPods Pro 2 case and causing a lot, a lot of mess. By comparison, if Apple went for a more matte case like Google, Samsung, and a lot of other manufacturers do, you'd have substantially less visibility on those scratches and it wouldn't look quite as glossy and ugly. But maybe people prefer the glossiness of the AirPods Pro 2 case, I just don't. Frankly, I didn't get a huge amount of use out of the speaker on the AirPods Pro 2 case. While it was nice to know that my AirPods Pro 2 were charging, that's about it. And it really didn't make a big difference. If you're the type of person that loses the AirPods Pro 2 case a lot, then maybe it's nice to be able to hear the speaker ring. But I didn't have that experience over this time, so I can't tell you whether that was actually beneficial for me. The other upgrade to the case is now not only does it charge on Qi wireless chargers, but it also charges on Apple Watch chargers as well, which means that you don't actually have to take up your Qi wireless charger or your MagSafe charger. Instead, you could just use a Apple Watch charger, which is nice, except for I didn't have a whole bunch of luck with this. I tried to charge this on a number of different places, including my dedicated Apple wireless charger, my Apple Watch charger, and on the back of my Samsung phone that actually has Qi, reverse Qi wireless charging in it, and none of them seemed to be all that reliable. Most of the time, my only go-to was having to use the dedicated lightning port on the bottom of the, of the case. And that sucks, because now, even when I'm carrying an iPhone around, I can now charge everything with wireless charging and USB-C. Normally, when I didn't bring a wireless charger to work, then I just charge my iPhone on the back of my Samsung device. But not being able to charge my AirPods Pro on the back of my Samsung device means that I need to bring in a lightning charger and make sure that I always have one with me. But let's break open the case and go ahead and talk about the AirPods themselves. Not a lot has changed in general design. They're the same sort of glossy white AirPods that we've seen in the prior AirPods Pro. But what has changed is the experience. Now, I'm not an audiophile, but I can say that the AirPods Pro sound absolutely great. It's a pleasure listening to music on them, especially because the isolation of the ear cups is actually pretty solid. One thing that I have noticed, though, is being in a windy city like San Francisco, air running over your face when you're on a run or on a jog, it will actually run against the AirPods and make a very loud whirring noise. And I don't know whether this is 
just a side effect of the noise cancellation or the audio pass through, but in either mode, I noticed that it was actually pretty bad relative to more low profile earbuds that sit closer to my ear. One beef that I have with all AirPods is the fact that they stay, start out in spatial audio with head tracking. And when I first listen to a YouTube video or to music, I run, wonder why the quality just sounds so bad. And it turns out that Apple turned back on the spatial audio, which if you're not using head tracking, then spatial audio is fine for me. But when I turn on head tracking, it sounds just so horrible. In Apple's keynote, they showed off how the AirPods Pro were super good at isolating specifically harsh sounds. And I found this was okay. Yes, there were a lot of construction sounds outside my window that managed to be isolated, but every now and then a sound would break through and it'd be very harsh. Like the occasional hissing sound that would be at the surface of like running water or something like that. For the most part though, I can tell you that audio pass through on the AirPods Pro 2 is better than just about any other earbud that I've ever used. It Apple has it down to a fine art and they don't have the same problem with like the low hum hiss that most other AirPod, Air, earbuds have in normal use cases. The noise cancellation is still pretty far up there. I'd still say it's in the top three in terms of quality. I personally have a better experience with AirPods Pro over the Galaxy Buds Pro 2, which my review is coming out soon. But personally, I prefer the noise cancellation that the Pixel Buds Pro offers, specifically because I don't feel the same sort of pressure in the Pixel Buds Pro over long periods of listening to them. The AirPods Pro 2 are generally comfortable to wear, but over long periods of time, I do feel a little bit of pressure or discomfort. And the Google Pixel Buds Pro have a tendency to actually release that pressure a lot better. The last thing that Apple touts with their AirPods is the ability to seamlessly connect between Apple devices, which is a good feature when it works properly. Now I have a Mac Studio, I have a MacBook Air, I have an iPad Pro, I have my my Apple Watch Ultra, and I have my iPhone 14 Pro. And I'd say about 50% of the time it would properly switch whenever I started listening to audio on another product. I've never had a lot of luck with Apple devices working seamlessly because iCloud hates me for whatever reason, but this was a big problem. And it actually seemed to have a worse hit rate than my AirPods Pro that I used over the last couple of years. Maybe this was just a bug that I've experienced with my AirPods Pro 2 that hopefully will be ironed out over time. But if Apple can't get its whole ecosystem play right, then what's the point? Maybe others aren't experiencing this problem, but it was really frustrating for me. What happens when you take the old AirPods Pro and put them in the new AirPods Pro 2 case? Let's check it out. So first I'm gonna take out my old AirPods Pro. Let's go ahead and just throw them out for a second. We will take the old, or the new AirPods Pro 2s. You can see them connect. Let's go ahead and put them in the other case. Let them charge, which they will do so. And then we'll take my old ones and we'll put them in the new case. Let's exit that, pop it open. Seems to be working okay. Let's take them out. They're making the ding sound, saying that they're charging. Oh, there you go. The AirPods in the charging case do not belong to you and do not work together. No, well, that's the first time I've seen that. Which left me to question, the AirPods Pro 2 generally are a good upgrade of the AirPods Pro. And if you specifically are looking for a pair of AirPods, then you probably should go for the Pro 2 if you can afford them. But if you already have the AirPods Pro, unless their battery is like completely shot, you probably shouldn't upgrade. I appreciate that Apple is still moving the ball forward in at least some way, but it doesn't seem like they're really changing the game in many ways. And it's tough to do that with a product that already worked very, very well. If you have any questions about the AirPods Pro 2, be sure to let me know in the comments. And if you like this review or any other Apple reviews that I do, be sure to like this video so I know to make more Apple content. Thank you for watching NOI, so I hope you like this quick review of the AirPods Pro 2 and their comparison to the AirPods Pro. If you did, I'll see you in the next one.